Hi everybody, Mr. Garrett here, and we're going to go over 6.4, which is inverse functions. Um, the number one thing to remember when we're finding inverses for any type of function is to switch x and y. It's kind of important. It might stick out a little bit throughout the presentation, throughout the video. Um, but please remember that whenever we're doing inverses, whether we're finding inverses or working with inverses, the key is to switch x and y. And so we're going to start off with just a random... Um, function here f of x and what we're going to do with f of x is we're going to find the uh, inverse for it <clears throat> and we're going to do that by switching x and y so here our order pair is negative 2 3 for f of x and so to find the inverse we're going to just switch x and y and so negative 2 3 becomes 3 negative 2 0 2 becomes 2 0 3 5 becomes 5 3 uh, 6, negative 10 becomes negative 10, 6. And 7, negative 8 becomes negative 8, 7. And so what I have here now is a table of values, excuse me, table of values that tell me what f inverse is. And so if f of x is this function here, then f inverse of x is this function here. Same thing can happen if I just have a list of ordered pairs. For example, I have g of x equals negative 5, 2, negative 3, 5, negative 1, 2, 1, 5, and 3, negative 1. I can write that g inverse, or g to the negative 1 of x, is equal to, and we'll just take these ordered pairs and switch x and y. 2, negative 5, 5, negative 3. Uh, 2, negative 1, 5, 1, and negative 1, 3. And so there's our set of ordered pairs. And these set of ordered pairs is what is uh, used to find G inverse. Same thing happens for a graph. For a graph, our big word of the day or phrase of the day is to switch x and y. And so I have some points here like negative 6, 4 and negative 4, 3 and negative 2, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 4, negative 1, 6, negative 2. Those are all points on that line, which is that graph. And to find the inverse, I'm just going to take the coordinates and switch x and y. So instead of having negative 6, 4, I'm going to have 4, negative 6. So there's 4, negative 6. Instead of having negative 4, 3, I'm going to go to 3, negative 4. Instead of having negative 2, 2, I'm going to go to 2, negative 2. 0, 1 becomes 1, 0. 2, 0 becomes 0, 2. 4, negative 1 becomes negative 1, 4. And 6, negative 2 becomes negative 2, 6. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this line in here. Try and do this right. Whoops. Draw it through there. And there's my graph. Um, the big or kind of other thing about this, other than switching x and y, that you should notice is that these graphs, these lines, are reflections over this line y equals x. And that's another um, characteristic of inverse functions. When you look at the graphs, their inverses, all right, the graphs that are inverses of each other are reflected over this line y equals x. And so you can see if you kind of look to the side there, this side is a mirror image of this side. They're reflections of one another, and that's because we switch x and y. To find um, inverses of equations, we're going to do again the same thing. We have y equals negative 3x plus 2 phrase of the day, switch x and y. And so I'm going to go ahead and say x equals negative 3y plus 2. Now we don't have an x equals button on our calculator and we usually don't leave equations that x is equal to something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for y. So I switched x and y here Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for y. And we should all know how to do that. I would subtract 2 from both sides. 
that would give me x minus 2 equals negative 3y. And then I would divide both sides by negative 3. And that would give me <clears throat> x minus 2 divided by negative 3 equals y. If I wanted to, I could also put this in slope-intercept form. That would be y equals negative one-third x plus two-thirds, because I have to put that three over the one x and the uh, th negative three underneath the negative two as well. So either one of these would work. <clears throat> Our book kind of varies back and forth as to which one they like as a solution. I'll accept either. If we have a function in function notation, f of x equals 2x squared minus 8, the first step is to replace f of x with y because that's kind of what it means anyways. The second step then is to switch x and y. We don't have that written on here, so we might as well put it down. Switch x and y. All right, exclamation point. So that's going to give me x equals 2y squared minus 8. Now again, we need to solve for um, y. And so I'm going to add 8 to both sides, add 8, and I'm going to get to x plus 8 equals 2y squared. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, divide by 2, and I'm going to have um, x plus 8 over 2 equals y squared. To undo a uh, square, we square root both sides. And I say then that y equals, and we should include plus or minus, because we're solving an equation, x plus 8 over 2. The other thing that we could write is plus or minus square root of 1 half x plus 4. That would be acceptable as well. Either one of those would work. Um, there is something that we have to worry about, about called uh, restricting the domain. Just in terms of making sure that functions, um, inverses have functions. The other thing that we need to talk about, and we'll do that at a later day, is... <clears throat> um, no, we'll talk about this at a later day. The other thing that we have to do is, because we started off with f of x... I should finalize by saying f inverse of x, and then I would say plus or minus, oops, plus or minus the square root of one half x plus four. And that would be my inverse. And then there's one last thing that we need to talk about, and that's how we verify um, inverses as inverses. And so um, there's a theorem that says Functions f and g are inverses if of each other if f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. And the function g is denoted by f to the negative 1, read as f inverse. And it says verify that f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. So we got to go through and we have to say f of g of x. And we have to do that composition. Now we learned that yesterday. So we're going to do f of 1 half x plus one half. And when I plug that in, I'm going to say two times one half x plus one half minus one. I've just taken the g of x and plugged it in for x right here. If I distribute this two, two times one half x is just one x. Two times one half is just one. And then I got the minus one. And x plus one minus one is x. So I've shown that f of g of x equals x. I now also have to show that g of f of x equals x. So I write g of f of x. And then I say g of 2x minus 1. Plug that into my g function, 1 half 2x minus 1 plus 1 half. Here's f of x going right in here for x in g of x. And I distribute this 1 half. 1 half times 2x is x. 1 half times negative 1 is negative 1 half. 
and then one half. Uh, and then we got this plus one half out here at the end. X minus one half plus one half is simply X. And so I've shown that G of F of X equals X. I've shown that F of G of X equals X. And I can say then therefore, use these three little dots for therefore, it'll be a math symbol for you. F of X and G of X are inverses of each other. Okay, so we're going to have you do some practice problems tomorrow. A um, couple things that we did mention was uh, when we have certain functions, we need to restrict the domain. We'll talk about things like that probably in a later date about uh, horizontal line tests and things like that. So hope you learned something, and good luck.